listen, I am so always so glad that you have joined me today for this 15 minute of daily inspiration. And as always, I pray that you are blessed and inspired by it. Listen, each time we gather together, it's really like a mini family reunion for me with the opportunity for us to connect and to fellowship virtually. Listen, I pray that you and your families are blessed, that you are well, and that you are thriving during this time. I'm Pastor Carey, pastor of Emerging Generations here at New Birth. And listen, I want to stay connected with you always. And you can do that by following me at Ms. Carey Baby on Instagram. Listen, on behalf of our pastor, Dr. Jamal H. Bryant, we want to make sure that you remain connected with the ministry. And you know that you can always do that by going to newbirth.org. Y'all know I like to jump right into our daily inspiration. And today, I want to talk about a life hack. We're going to be shifting from scarcity to abundance. One of the most uncomfortable subjects for me, in all honesty, to talk about is money. It has always, at one point or another in my life, been a point of severe contention. As an adult, I either didn't have enough of it or was always under distress trying to figure out how I can make more of it or make the ends meet, or I would have just enough of it to be comfortable but never really enough to enjoy it. I couldn't enjoy it because I was always worried about, burdened by how I would lose it, making it go away. It's one of the only two things that keeps me up late at night and has the ability to bring me into distress and give me severe heartburn. I grew up with absolutely nothing. I was a kid who lived in public housing at the time and went next door to ask if we could borrow eggs, if we could borrow bread, if we could borrow sugar. Depending on the day and what we were most in need of, I was asking for it. And can I tell you, I absolutely hated it. So much so that to this day, I have a very difficult time asking anyone for anything. I will work as hard as possible. I will work as long as possible so that I never have to ask anybody to do anything for me. And the truth is, I'd rather go without, and I have gone without, because I was too embarrassed or too ashamed to ask for help. I'm the product of a single mother who worked two jobs my entire life to ensure that the basic needs of my brother and I were met. I am a woman who is only two generations removed from poverty. My grandmother, for who I am named, used to clean floors and clean toilets um, as she did what was called private homework, working as a housekeeper for wealthy white people. And my mother served as a housekeeper in our local hotel after giving birth to me at a very young age and worked for more than 30 plus years folding towels in a laundry. I don't share this with you because I'm ashamed of them. I share it with you because I love them and I wouldn't be who I am today without them. I've never folded a towel. I've never cleaned a toilet because I stand on the backs of two women who work tirelessly to ensure that I would never have to do so. But I do share this with you because I realize that my fear of money My discomfort with money, my dysfunction at times with money was rooted in where I came from. It created a pathology of lack and scarcity in my life that I still, quite honestly, work to overcome even today. Not just in my money, but in my relationships, sometimes in my emotions, and even at times in my spirit. When I grew up, there never seemed to be enough. It was always, mama don't have it today, baby, or we just don't really have enough today. Uh, Money doesn't grow on trees. She, She would say, let me see if I can borrow it, or if she couldn't do it this time, she would say, well, baby, maybe next time I'll be able to do it. Or she would always say, I don't know how it's gonna happen, but God will provide. 
I remember growing up and going to school with children who always seemed to have more than enough. Listen, they always had the best clothes. They had the finest shoes. And listen, while we were only able to get a couple of outfits if we were lucky for the month and maybe one pair of tennis shoes for the year when school started, listen, we got a 4th of July outfit, we got a Christmas outfit, and we got an Easter outfit. And if things were good, we were able to get school clothes at the start of the year. But I always noticed children that I went to school with, they never seemed to be in scarcity. They had the coolest bikes. They went on family vacations. To this day, I have never gone on a family vacation. They just always seemed to have it all. And so immediately in my young consciousness, money and wealth and good things were reserved for certain people. And for some reason, I wasn't included amongst these certain people. And so I began to wrap around my mind and I began to wrap around my heart that I would never have it, that I was destined to live a life of scarcity, that I would never have access to abundance. And for a very long time, if I can be honest, I resented how I grew up. I resented that there was never enough. I resented the times when I would come home from school and the lights were off or the water was not working. I resented to having eat, having to eat what was just in the refrigerator and never really being able to go out and eat, never having the opportunity to really go to a restaurant. I resented not having money for college and I could give you a laundry list that goes on and on and on of what I believe I did not have. But one day when I was at a very low financial point in my life, I I was at a very low spiritual and emotional point in my life. It was then that I realized that I had adopted a life of scarcity based upon my experiences. I didn't adopt this because this is what God had designed for me, but I adopted it out of my own ignorance because I had come into agreement with scarcity. And my life was simply manifesting that in which I had made covenant with. But listen, the Bible tells us in Acts 10 and 34, it says, Then Peter began to speak, and he says, I now truly understand that God does not show favoritism, but welcomes those from every nation who fear him and who will do what is right. I had to realize that God was not against me. Do you hear me? I had to realize that God was not showing favoritism to others, but then turning his back on me because of who I was, because of where I came from, because of my bloodline. But I had to understand that every person has equal, unconditional favor and the love of God. Listen, I had to understand that I needed to accept responsibility for the way that I had been thinking. I had to accept responsibility for what I had adopted in my life, which produced a way of living that was actually, hear this, counter to the things that God had designed for me. It was counter to the way in which the Father had called me to live because I had adopted a scarcity mindset. And what you believe will ultimately become your truth. Can I tell you that scarcity had become my truth? Can I tell you that lack had become my truth? Can I tell you that debt had become my truth? Because it is what I believed God had assigned to me. Listen, a scarcity mindset is simply the belief that there will never be enough for you. It's the belief that you will always be limited. It's the belief that creates feelings that cause anguish and anxiety. They cause fear and limitation. They even cause distress. It's the belief that you will always only have a little, that you will always live in lack, that you will always have less than instead of believing that there is more than enough. When you live with a scarcity mindset, you will begin to make decisions out of fear of believing that you are constantly in a deficit. 
the danger of a scarcity mindset is that it doesn't always stop with money. Hear me in the spirit. But when you have a scarcity mindset, it spills over into every area of your life. It spills over into your job. You'll believe that there is never a promotion for you. It spills over into your relationships. You'll believe that there are not uh, enough people in the world for you or that you are not entitled to a healthy relationship. It spills over into how you see God. And what happens is this becomes a belief that you are always the victim. It becomes a belief that you will always receive the short end of the stick. I don't know who I'm talking to today. It makes you believe when you have a scarcity mindset that God favors everyone else, but he never favors you. Robert Wilson shares, he says, we live in an age of artificial scarcity that is maintained by ignorance and fear. One of my favorite authors, Florence Scovel Shin shares, she says, there is always plenty on a man's pathway, but it can only be brought into manifestation through desire, through faith, or through the spoken word. She says that Christ brought this out clearly when he shared with man that you've got to make the first move when he tells us in Matthew 7 and 7. He says, ask and it shall be given to you. He says, seek and ye shall find it. It's, he says, knock and it shall be open unto you. She continues to share that, listen, man or woman's only enemy is the fear of lack. It is the fear of failure. It is the fear of sickness. It is the fear of loss. And it is the fear of feeling insecure on some plane. She says, this is why Jesus says to, to us, why are ye feel fearful, O ye of little faith? In Matthew 8 and 26. Listen, a scarcity mindset is rooted in fear and a lack of faith. And when this is embedded in your thoughts, when scarcity is embedded in your thoughts, you will begin to speak scarcity and you will begin to act out scarcity, which then creates a life of scarcity and your very existence is built on lack and scarcity. It's a dangerous way to live. In the seven habits of highly effective people, listen, one of the things that Stephen Covey shares with us, he says that when you live in a world of scarcity, or you believe you live in a world of scarcity, you will compete for available resources even when there is an abundance of them. You will fight for things that are already yours when you have a mindset of scarcity. He further shares that most people are deeply scripted, hear this, in what I call the scarcity mentality. He says they see life as having only so much, as though there were only one uh, one pie out there and it's as if someone else is going to get the big piece of the pie and it would mean less for them. When you have a scarcity mindset, it makes you believe that there is never enough for you but that there is more than enough for everybody else. How many times have you thought there isn't enough for me, but you watch other people appear to be blessed? How many times have you felt like you were sitting on the sidelines of life with a scarcity mindset? How do you know if you have a scarcity mindset? When you have a scarcity mindset, you are envious of others. You covet what others have because you don't have a true understanding of what the Father has for you. When you have a scarcity mindset, you speak words of scarcity, you speak words of lack, and you are constantly thinking in deficiency rather than in abundance. Listen, when you have a mindset of scarcity, you will believe that your condition is permanent, that everything around you can never change, that you are stuck in the space that you are in. When you have a mindset of scarcity, you fear change. You live with a spirit of resentment and you also live in a space of always being the victim and never the victor. But can I offer to you in our 15 minutes today that this is not the will of the Father for us? Do you know that we serve a God who is not a God of scarcity, but he is a God of abundance? The Bible tells us in Psalms 31 and 19, 
It says, how great is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you, which you bestow in the sight of men on those who take refuge in you. Psalms 34, 8 through 10 says, oh, taste and see, yeah, that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them who fear him. Hallelujah. It says the young lions do lack and suffer hunger. He's, it says, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Listen, when you become one of the top 10 in which our senior pastor has been proclaiming to us, listen, you can't become one of the top 10 unless you shift your mind from that of scarcity to a mind of abundance. And can I tell you one of the most powerful ways to shift from scarcity to abundance is through renewing your mind in the word of the Lord. Listen, the word of God is your primary tool and your primary resource to break curses, to break patterns of scarcity and lack in your mind. How do you do this? You begin to do it by meditating on the word of God and speaking abundance over your life. Psalm 65 and 11 says, you crown the year with your goodness. Yeah, it says in your paths drip with abundance. Deuteronomy 28 and 12 says, God will throw open the doors of his sky vaults. Hallelujah. Psalms 37, 3 through 4 says, trust in the Lord. Yeah. It says, and do good, dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. It says, delight yourself also in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. 2 Corinthians 9 and 8 says, and God is able to bless you abundantly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Deuteronomy 28 and 12 says, the Lord will open the heavens. Hallelujah. The storehouse of his bounty to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the works of your hands. He says, you will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. Glory to God. Ephesians 3 and 30 says, now unto him, hallelujah, who is able to do immeasurably more than we could ask or imagine according to the power that is at work within us. Listen, for many of us, our scarcity mindset will never change until we know the word of the Lord and we begin to hide it in our heart and carry it in our belly. So with that, so when those moments of scarcity thoughts rise up, we can begin to speak the word of the Lord over it and know who if we have been called in him. Listen, a mindset of abundance is understanding the love of God for you. It's grounded in the belief that there is supply for everyone, even you, that there is more than enough, that God himself is abundance and therefore cannot run out of anything. It is a mindset that flows from an understanding of who you are in God, not what people think about you, not what people say about you, but it is your value and your worth according to the Father. It flows from a deep sense of gratitude and appreciation for what you already have. And hear this, for what you know God has shown you concerning your future. Listen, it's you understanding that you've got to think big. When you have an a abundance mindset, your vision is large. You are focused on plenty and you are not focused on lack. Listen, your pursuit is joy and gladness and not that of resentment or bitterness. Listen, you are proactive and not reactive. You seize opportunities to give and sow. You view failure as an opportunity. Listen, you don't compare your life or your situation to others and you know that nothing is permanent. You know that in a moment of a twinkling of an eye that God can shift that thing that seems unfavorable. He will turn it around in your favor. Can I tell you that my life began to change when I came out of agreement with scarcity. Listen, I want you to know that this is a process and it is a daily discipline. We have to agree, hear this, with abundance daily. Listen, I'm challenging you to do the absolute same thing. This week, I want to challenge you to speak these seven affirmations over your life from awakenthegreatnesswithin.com. Number one, wealth floats around me daily. Number two, every day I am becoming
getting richer and richer. Number three, money comes to me easily and effortlessly. Number four, my actions create constant wealth, prosperity, and abundance. Number five, I am open and receptive to all of the wealth that life offers me. Number six, wealth is pouring into my life. And number seven, my wealth shines from within me. Listen, today I pray that you were blessed. I pray that you were challenged to move from a mindset of scarcity to that of abundance. Can I tell you? Because it is your portion. It is what the Father has designed for your life, but you will never tap into it unless you come out of agreement with scarcity and into covenant with abundance. Listen, I love you. Our entire new birth family loves you. Listen, if you want an opportunity to sow right now, I wouldn't even let this moment pass me. Sow into your next level of abundance, and you can do that by using the prompts below. If you say, Pastor Carrie, I want to become a part of a community that recognizes that scarcity is not of the Father, but it is of abundance, we would love to welcome you here in our family at New Birth. You can join by going to newbirth.org. Listen, I love you. I'm praying for you as I am walking this thing out with you. I believe that the Father has more for us and that abundance is our lot. Abundance is our portion and abundance shall be our posture. Listen, have a blessed, blessed day. And now, New Birth, it's time for your video announcements. We'd like to say happy birthday to everyone born in the month of September. May God's riches and blessings overtake you. Hey, we're just one week away from Demonstration Tithing Sunday. We're excited about what God is doing in our lives. On Sunday, September 13th, we are encouraging all members and frequent visitors to collectively tithe. Also, we encourage others to commit to begin tithing. Please visit our website to complete our Top 10 questionnaire or text in the Top 10 to 71441. Next Sunday, it's Demonstration Tithing Sunday. Don't miss it. Our pastor's vision for feeding the community is made manifest on a weekly basis. If you need free groceries, please come by our King's Table Saturday from 10 a.m. until 12 p.m. Everyone is welcome at the King's Table. Also, we want you to visit our Call to Conquer bookstore. That's right, just log on to newbirth.org, click the store icon, and there you can find the book of the month, the New Birth face mask, and all your ministry needs. Just log on today at newbirth.org. And Emerging Generations is seeking volunteers who are reliable, flexible, energetic, creative, passionate, patient, organized, teachable, and a team player. Just visit newbirth.org and complete the volunteer leader application. And we want you to join us for the New Birth Employment Network in collaboration with Ronstad Rice Source and USA Diversity Partners. They'll discuss navigating diversity and inclusion in the workplace, Tuesday, September 8th at 11 a.m. Please join newbirth.org for more information and to register. And that's going to do it for our video announcements.